Well, for a start, our focus in the SOEs wouldn't be to prepare them for sale. Uh, we think that the <laughs> we think that they are best kept in uh, government ownership, and that it's very efficient. Um, what would be the biggest thing we would do? Well, we wouldn't have a 15% overvalued currency. I hate to come back to that old kernel. I do think that um, that uh, it would be misleading of me to say that we could necessarily keep every mine and every other business in New Zealand operating, and I wouldn't want to be pretending that that's the case. What I would say is that we would have more job opportunities in New Zealand. We wouldn't be losing 160,000 people over four years to Australia because we'd be addressing all parts of the spectrum. It's absolutely tragic that we've got youth unemployment rates in New Zealand that are as high as they are. You go out to South Auckland and we've got not just a, a, a moral issue out there, but we're actually going to have an impact on all of us everywhere else in New Zealand because there are going to be so many disaffected people who think, well, why should I comply with the, the rules of society when society doesn't work for me? So we have to make sure that all of our young people, if they're not in work, are in training or in ed education. Uh, we have to make sure that our businesses are operating in an environment that they can prosper as much as they can. Does that mean that everyone in New Zealand will not suffer hardship? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that fewer people will. And that's the role of government. And on that, I absolutely agree with these other two speakers here. Governments should be held to account for things that could and should be better. Um, I I think uh, David's hit the head on it, privatisation and the exchange rate, those two things together um, are one of the key drivers of what's going on here. Uh, and I think that if, you, you know, if we don't take action on those two things, then we're going to see a lot more closures. Um, while I've got the microphone, I would advocate the citizen initiated referendum petition. Um, <laughs> it is, um, <coughs> we, we're you know, approaching getting the numbers on that, and given that privatisation is one of the key issues around economic management, um, if we can finish the numbers by the end of this month, say, which and we're not far off that, um, then we can drive through a referendum next year, and that will once again be an opportunity to have the economic debate about the economic future of our country, and it's an opportunity to stop the privatisation process, because even though it's not a binding referendum, it becomes part of the political pressure that the government's under on top of all the other pressures they're under around the privatisation program. So if you haven't been um, pushing that around your workplaces, I'd really encourage people to do so. I never said that I supported Maggie Thatcher. I was trying to show by illustration that even someone that thought like her came to her senses when she saw, in practice, what her policies meant. All right? Now, Solid Energy has paid in excess of 170 million profits to the government in recent years. Those profits are high. With the global financial crisis, there is a shortage of demand for the product, but that's cyclical. Surely we see a way through that 
where the prices will one day rise. And the only way they can rise and be serviced from that uh, mine is that the mine is open. And with a uh, much more competitive export dollar, it would still be open. But I fear that the real issue is that the cost uh, of um, solar energy has been minimised in preparation for privatisation. And their internal documents say that. So that's why we've got to get motivated to stop them in their tracks.